increase the rate of time to thousands of years per second. part of the solar system that we call the Oort cloud. It's this leftover debris from when the solar system formed. Lots and lots, millions and millions of comets, maybe even some asteroids that are out there. And what we were going to show is dynamic interactions that might happen between our Oort cloud and other stars' Oort clouds as everything is in motion and stars pass by each other. Now, as we were modeling the Oort cloud, we turned to one of the world's leading experts on modeling it. His name is David Nisvorny. He gave us his simulation, and we were looking at it inside of the planetarium just to get an idea of how to make it beautiful for the show. And we played with how bright all the particles were, and we immediately saw something that we had never seen before, that no one had ever seen before. It was a spiral structure in this Oort cloud. Now, this Oort cloud is a simulation of what we think it looks like, but it's based on real data of objects we have measured in the outer part of our solar system. So when we saw it, we were blown away. It was a spiral shape, almost looking like a galaxy itself, but it's shaped by the forces of the galaxy itself, of the, the, what we call the tidal force of the galaxy. So this spiral structure was brand new, and we immediately wrote up a paper for an astrophysical journal, and it's now a published part of astronomers' knowledge of what the outer part of our solar system looks like, and it all came from visualizing data for the American Museum of Natural History's new space show, Encounters in the Milky Way. I'm Pedro Pascal. Join me on a journey through our tight-knit, stellar neighborhood into the bustling metropolis of the Milky Way. We'll witness some of the chance encounters that have shaped the destiny of our sun, and maybe even the course of life in the cosmos. On our travels, we can expect to pass through bubbles again and again. Because the galaxy is peppered with massive stars that go out in a blaze, creating gigantic dust-clearing shockwaves. star's path is unique. We're all on a journey around the Milky Way galaxy. For us, for our sun and solar system, one orbit takes 230 million years to complete. See the Big Dipper? Watch as we increase the rate of time to thousands of years per second. Scientists can simulate the past, present, and future of our entire 200 billion star galaxy. Some star clusters hint at a large structure, a thousand light years across. It's a clearing within dense clouds of gas and dust. We call this our local bubble. Our solar system is currently inside the clearing, which is why stargazers on Earth 
have such a magnificent view of the Milky Way. The goosebump factor is, is, is a combination of really the, the notion that we're seeing real science, but we're putting that together in ways with the explanation, seeing how things behave at these vast scales, seeing our, again, our relationship to it. That's, and we have, we have to keep that thread. And then drawing that together as, you know, a pacing and a story that's really told within a limited time, we put the music score to it. And Robert's music, as they say, really gives it wings. And that in the end, the show aspect is something that you feel here at best, if we can pull that off. The stars, we say they're beautiful. We say that flowers are beautiful or a landscape. Why that's beautiful is because I think we do react to it on a level that's a, emotional and it reminds us of our place in a much grander realm. And the stars ultimately so, I mean, for so much of human existence, we didn't know whether they might just be 10 feet above our heads, you know. Uh, but there's something that echoes the, the periodicity of the sky. And then, you know, it's, it's, it was our notion of a clock is based on our diurnal, repetitive nature and all this. But you look at the stars, you're looking at light, it's coming to you. The sun is too bright to look at. But there's something almost hinting at that these are other suns, perhaps. And then that light that links us when we figured out that that's traveling at a set amount of time. You can look at the, you can look out at the stars and you're looking back into time and you're looking back into the times of lives. You're looking at light that's arriving from different epochs and different periods. And you can say, you know, a deceased relative or what have you, you're seeing light that really is still part of their time. That's where it gets kind of spiritual. And, um, you know, and that's real. And that's, you know, it's what I think holds us together in a way.